far away Someday I may tell A tale of metal tangled When into your world I fell Without you I wander Soaking secretly afraid But in your grasp The fears don't last Though some of them have stayed I wheeled around Guitar. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're doing Sample in a Jar by Fish. I'm going to teach you all the, all the sections and all the chords. And I'm also going to give you some tips on how to solo over a song like this. Uh, you know, songs like these are so fun to play lead over or to improvise over because um, this song does a really wonderful job of, of sort of swimming through a lot of different changes that are really fun to play over. And what ends up happening is you can play a lot of major and minor riffs uh, in the same key. And that's due to modal mixture. So I'm going to talk about what's going on uh, for that, that verse when basically it goes from A to C to G uh, to D, which are not common chords in the key of A major, right? So there's stuff going on there that we're going to dig into. And I'll talk about how I went about soloing and maybe how Trey might have gone about it. And, um, and then, you know, it's just a lot of fun to learn these parts because we have some really cool triads. And uh, if you're looking to bone up on your triads, this is a wonderful song to do it because we literally are just playing through these triad three string shapes uh, throughout the entire verse. So with that, uh, remember to subscribe, check out the Patreon, see if it'll work for you and hit the notification bell. Appreciate your support as always. So let's jump on in and get started. All right, so um, the verse and intro have the same exact chord progression. And what I'd like to start with is just the triads. Um, any, any great lead guitar player will really have looked at triads closely. And that's because we can play co entire chords with just three strings. Uh, sometimes as guitar players, we forget that a chord is just three notes, really. So if we look at it like an open chord, uh, G, B, D is an entire G chord. Everything else is just repeating it up an octave. G, B, G. Same thing with like a C chord. C, E, G. That's an entire C chord right there. The next two strings are just C and E. Repeated up an octave, right? That's true with bar chords too. So, uh, if you're a lead guitar player like Trey, or, you know, any, any lead guitar player, you can play entire chord progressions anywhere in the neck. And that's what a lot of these players will do. Um, so, and that, this song is just a wonderful, it's like a study almost, as if it were in, a, in an instructional book, because we're going to play all these triads on the same three strings. So it's a great opportunity to look at this. So before I go through the exact rhythm, which is not, not going to be too complicated, but let's just isolate the chords themselves and you can learn all these cool triads. We're going to start on the fourth, third, and second strings only. All right. And we're going to go 11, 9, 10. That's a an, an first inversion A chord, A triad. It's like over C sharp, but because the bass is playing A, we're not even going to think of this as, as A over C sharp. It's just an A because, you know, Mike Gordon is playing the bass. Here's a C, 10, 9, 8. Right. Then G, uh, 9, 7, 8, first inversion. There's 777 for a D. Here's, here's the familiar D bar chord, but this is just the triad. Okay. 
so far we've got A, C, G, D. Now we go back to A, but we play it from the E shape, not up here like it is on the C shape. So that's 7, 6, 5. Here's E, uh, 6, 4, 5, first inversion. E minor, just take that major third down to a flat third. And then finally a first inversion D chord. And that's four, two, three. So A, C, G, D, A, E, E minor, and then D. All right, now we'll cover the strumming. Um, on the intro, it's a little bit more involved because there's no singing, and that's that's a general rule of thumb is that the uh, guitar part will be will calm down considerably during singing. So for the Intro will be a little more detailed on the rhythm, and then the verse will be able to uh, do a simpler rhythm. So, and just so you know, there is a, a bar pickup, a pickup bar of basically muting. He's going bass, it's, it's bass, treble, bass, bass, treble, okay? Uh, actually, it's bass, treble, bass, 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 treble. Down, 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 up, down, down, down. All right, not necessary to do, but kind of cool, because that's what he's doing. Now we're going to do these, this intro here, and we're going to go, we're going to hit the fifth string only really on the first chord. You could play it on any of the chords and it's fine. But you're going to go down, 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 up, and then mute, down, up, C, down, down, up, mute, down, up. So that first bar. The muting is not don't let the muting really mess you up too much because as long you can just strum very lightly and it's that's that's also fine all right so we have this then mute then seven and nine hammer on and then the D chord down down up mute so that first line would be Good. Next line here, we've got the A. Down, 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 up, mute, down, up. Then E, down, down, up, down, up on a mute. And then E minor, you want to re-finger your, your uh, E minor to be middle, first ring. And you go down, 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 down. Second to fourth fret hammer on. And then the D. Then I repeat. So let's take the whole uh, first two lines, and then I'll show you what to do on the second ending here. So, three, four. Second time. Let it ring out for eight beats and it creates a six four bar because we, we bring it out for three four then six more beats two three four five six you're welcome to keep time as i did on the demo now for the verse we we have a drastically simpler rhythm uh, except that this chords are exactly the same right so let me explain what's really important is trey is a wonderful um rhythm player partially because he's so in tune with the band right that's part of what makes fish so great they're just such great listeners so trey is highly emphasizing the second and fourth beats and that's something that um a lot of guitarists who play in bands will do because you know you want to you want to help your drummer out so um we're going to be doing that so down down and you want to anticipate that okay so the verse is It's going to be down, down on the A, then mute, or just, yeah, uh, so mute, and then up, down, so. One, two, three, E, and a four. That's going to be the general pattern. Down, down, mute, up, down. Then you do the same thing over the G. Down, down, mute, up, down, then A, down. Minor down, down, 
then the D, you let it ring out. Okay? So that whole line. You can add a few other strums in there if you want. Second line, we do the same thing except we just extend the last chord. Just extend this D four, six beats. Four, five, six. But on the last two beats we go, so that would be, we're going to count uh, five beats. Three, four, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, it's going to be three, four, then the first three beats. Okay, so three, four, one, two, three, four, five. All right, sorry, I, I said that wrong again. It's three, four, then the first five beats, and then up A. Uh, so that's just the rhythm of that. So that would be three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Up A, and the A is, is anticipated for the chorus. Okay, so for the chorus, we have the easiest part of the song. It's just going to be three chords, A, D, and E. The string pattern is going to be, uh, well, the first chord is anticipated, but then you go down again, and then D, uh, it's like D up, so D bass, four string open, up, up down. down down back to the D bass and then a quick up down that's one E and a two E and a or three E and a four E and a back to the repeating of the A and D if you can just keep that hand moving because you know sometimes with my private students I'll tell them a string pattern and then they'll get locked into thinking I can only move my hand when it's down or up the truth is every guitar every great guitar player is always moving their wrist it's just that sometimes you're avoiding the strings. So if, watch me do it here. See, I'm always moving my wrist. Uh, I'm just not hitting the strings all the time. So a little slower, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. Got it? So that happens four times, the, the progression. Right, uh, it's eight bars long, so um, A D E D happens four times. Then it goes back to a second verse, second chorus. Well, let me just back up for a sec. Before the second verse, there's a quick interlude, which is just like the intro, short little solo, and then second verse, second chorus. After the second verse, we go uh, second chorus, we go to a bridge, and we're going to do the same string pattern as the chorus: down, 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 up down, except it's different chords. So we have C, down, down, and up, down to D, A, down, G. Repeat. At this time, we go to E, down, 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 up, down, down, down. That's when Trey sings, uh, everything sounds so wrong. Um, and then, you know, if you're interested, the, the, the notes being played in the studio and live recording not in the rhythm track, but in the uh, melody would be, oh, sorry. It would be the flat three and natural six. You can't really do it while you're doing this, but it would be eighth fret, second string, seventh, uh, ninth fret, first string. But let's do the bridge all together here. Three, four. goes back to a chorus and the chorus is extended and they and they keep tagging the line um, sample in a jar all right finally as I promised let's talk about how to solo over this song uh, after the chorus extended chorus it goes into the epic tray solo and that's over the verse so we've already learned the verse it's a C G D A E E minor D now, the first thing you should know is you should basically think about arpeggios. That'll get you really on, basically just play the chords one note at a time, um, play the triads one note at a time. That'll get you on the right track. As to 
find, you know, realize how to how to play single notes in a chord progression. And then you would learn all those shapes everywhere. So there's A in a couple places. Here's C in a couple places. Here's G in a couple places, right? You'd want to go through that so you could. Okay, the other thing you can do is understand that this is A major for the first chord. When it goes to C, you can play A minor pentatonic. When it goes to G, it's still A minor pentatonic is okay. So here's what I mean. And then back to A major. See? A major, A minor, A minor, A minor, A major, A major for the E major. And then E minor, go back to, to A minor, to D, A minor. So. You can classify all these chords as either A major, A major, or A minor, and that's called modem mixture. And what's happening is it's a flat three chord. That's not a major chord. It's a minor chord. It's the, it's a flat. It's a chord that's in A minor. Sorry, I'm a little tongue tied today. Um, same with G. That's in a, that's a chord in A minor. So realize that they're modulating from A major not to a different key, but to a different mode, which is minor. You'll find a bunch of Reddit threads probably that will say, well, this is in like four or five different keys. It's not really accurate. Uh, it's, it's really just A major going to A minor. It's A, A, A the whole time. So you can see that here's the major third of A right here. That's C sharp. It's going to C. Well, guess what? That's the, that's the minor third of A. G is the flat seven of A, which is a minor note. D major, you could have an A major or A minor. But any blues artist will tell you that the four chord's a great time to play minor. Back to major, E major, that's very major, so we want the, the to keep inside of A major there. When it goes to E minor, that's either A mixolydian or A minor. So try not to get overwhelmed with thinking, gosh, I need to play 20 different scales. You could play two scales if you just knew where to do it knew where to play them. That's something I learned in, in undergrad in jazz, uh, in my jazz degree is try to, try to find a trick. Try to find tricks to where you can get away with playing just a couple scales. And then if you really, you know, if you really want to, you can try to play a scale on every single chord. At first, it'll sound a little bit um, mechanical and predictable, so you're gonna find your own style of how to make that sound natural. But that would be my recommendation. Go through the arpeggios and then think about how A major goes into A minor for the C, G, and D chords, and E minor chord. But E major chord would be an A major, and uh, so would, well, that's it. It's just A major and E major, and then the other chord you can kind of think of it as A minor. Hope that makes sense. I know it was a little bit, uh, possibly confusing, but you know, I'm always here to answer questions if you have any. So enjoy. All right. Well done, everybody. Nice fish song to have under our belt. Remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye.